Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are dealing with birth trauma. This includes both avoidable and unavoidable trauma sustained by infant during birth. The risk factors includes primary parity, osteomalacia, prolonged or precipitated labor, malpresentations, instrumental delivery and vacuum extraction. Increased risk of birth trauma is seen with in infants who have a low birth weight, large four date babies or overgrown babies, infants with congenital anomalies. Birth injury includes superficial abrasions, petechiae and bruising, cephalhematoma, fractures, trauma to ZNS and visceral trauma. Superficial abrasions occur over the site of forceps or vacuum application. Accidental incision of the baby during cesarean section can also lead to superficial abrasions. Management is by stitching the gapping incised wound and local application of 1% acute solution of mercurochrome in order to prevent the infection. Petechiae and bruising. It is seen in prolonged delivery and usually spontaneous del uh, recovery occurs in 2 to two, 3 days. Cephalhematoma. It is a subperiosteal collection of blood due to rupture of superficial vein between the skull and the periosteum. The cystic or fluctuant swelling is limited by the suture lines and usually appears within few hours after birth or on the second day. It is common over the parietal bone and is associated with linear fractures. It usually resolves on uh, in 3 to 6 weeks. Fracture The common bones which are fractured are the skull, clavicle, humerus and the femur. Of this, clavicle is the most common bone that is fractured. Skull has the ability to mold during birth process, thus protective from the fracture in normal uncomplicated labor. Compression by forceps of maternal pubis or sacral promontory produces the depressed fracture. Disappears spontaneously or requires surgical elevation if associated with a neurological manifestation. Clavicle, the most common bone that is fractured, and uh, it is seen in breech extraction or shoulder impaction. Management is by immobilization of arm on affected side by pinning the infant's sleeve to shirt or wrapping the limb. Also analgesics like can be given. Humerus. It occurs due to, fracture of the humerus occurs due to forcible manipulation and pulling at baby's hand. The commonest site is at the junction of upper one-third and lower two-third. Diagnosis is made by uh, the symptoms, noting the symptoms such as pain, limitation of movement, asymmetric moral response and crepitus at the site of fracture. Management is by immobilization that is strapping of the arm by the side of the chest for at least two weeks. It carries an excellent prognosis but in some cases, the epiphysis may be damaged and this leads to a permanently shortened limb. Fracture of the femur is relatively rare but can occur due to forcible manipulation of the legs in breech extraction. Well, spontaneous he healing is expected. Birth trauma to the CNS can be classified into intracranial injury, spinal cord transection and peripheral nerve palsies. Intracranial injury, the risk factors include precipitate delivery, forceps and vacuum extraction in large babies and breach and other abnormal presentations. Spinal cord transection is usually rare and follows the difficult breach extraction uh, or click and crack may be heard during delivery. It is characterized by flaccid paraplegia, retention of urine and overflow incontinence. Respiratory failure due to diaphragmatic paralysis, sensations dulled or absent below the site of lesion and this carries a bad prognosis. Peripheral nerve paralysis. Uh, the most common peripheral nerve palsy is the Erb's palsy which occurs due to birth trauma. 
Facial nerve palsy, it occurs with a forces application. Diagnosis is made by uh, the typical uh, facial asymmetry, inability to close eye on affected side, recovery is usually excellent. Brachial plexus palsy, it occurs due to difficult bridge extraction or shoulder impaction. Herbs palsy, which, is, which affects the upper cervical roots, that is C5 and C6. Diagnosis is uh, the arms uh, hangs limply, adducted, internally rotated, elbow extended, a lack of spontaneous movement, asymmetric motor response and associated fracture clavicle. Klumsky's palsy. It involves the lower cervical nerve roots, C5, C7, C8 and T1. Clinical features include wrist drop, flaccid paralysis of hand, absent grafts response. Phrenic nerve palsy is usually rare and often associated with brachial palsy. Irregular labor, thoracic breathing, characteristic seizure movement of the diaphragm during respiration. No specific therapy is required. Baby should be placed on affected side. Oxygen administration and give age feeding indicator based on severity. Visceral trauma. It occurs in difficult breach extraction. It includes capsular laceration of the liver and spleen and adrenal hemorrhage. Manifestations include severe pallor, tachycardia, evidence of shock and hyperbilirubinemia. Management includes early recognition and administration of vitamin K. Blood transfusion with monitoring of central venous and arterial pressures are required. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe below. This is my first video and uh, uh, please comment below so that I can improve my presentation. Thank you.